I am Geeta Upadhyay, the Artistic Director and the CEO of Kala Sangam. And how long have you been in this country? Over 25 years now. And you're originally from? I'm from South India. And you always danced? Not really, because um, I learned dance in Chennai, in India, from a very great guru, Sri Dandai Dapani Pillai. And I worked uh, on mime and expression especially with uh, Gauri Amma. But I took medicine as a profession. So I was working as a consultant mainly in India, Malaysia and then in England. When I came to England it was for a consultant's job. And then we started Kala Sangam. So I branched off from medicine and moved towards arts a lot more. Why did you do that? Well, when we came here, I didn't know there was any dance at all. But um, I thought we should promote South Asian arts, not just dance, in a different way. And that's why we founded this company, Kala, which is arts and Sangam, which is a confluence, bringing together of people, but using arts as a medium. But not just performing and teaching, but using arts in the area of health, youth, community settings, so on and so forth. So that's why we started off with dance classes and we've branched into other things now. But you've had a lot of dance students. Yes, you I put, have. You put them through the Arangato? That's correct, yes. We have classes running in Yorkshire region, in Bradford, Leeds, Keithley and in Wakefield. And beyond the region, we have our students who have set up companies. For example, in Oxford, we have Kala Arpan. Uh, in Leicester, we have Nritya Kala. In Blackburn and Altrincham, we have Kala Anjali. So all the names are tagged with Kala in them. And so they are also producing a lot of good students now. But uh, the difference is that I don't push them for an Arangetra. It's their choice if they want to do one. But sometimes parents can't afford the costs of an Arangetram. So what we do is to have something of a mini Arangetram, which we call a Salange Puja or Gunguru Puja, you know, uh, offering to the bells and salutations and that sort of a thing, which is done as a group. Usually Arangetram is a solo performance or two sisters do it. Why do you think they're so keen to do one? That's the tradition and the culture. So um, when we start learning dance, we go through a repertoire. We finish the repertoire and we present it to an invited audience. And it's also to seek the blessings of elders and seek the blessings of God for having gained that achievement. Did you yourself do an arrogate? I did, yes. And how was Many yours? moons ago. <laughs> what was that experience like? It was, it was a very traditional way it's done. And uh, it's changed a lot. The scene of an Arangetram has changed from then. When I did it, the focus was on the dance. We had no videos to start with, just a few pictures. And uh, there was no the added on gadgets like, you know, you have design of the card which can go up to thousands of pounds now or you can have um, uh, other decorations on the stage and added things which were not focused on very much then um, and the repertoire was longer because more than the eight piece repertoire we also put in folk dances and things like that um, uh, and uh, it was not even done in very big halls. Some of the Arangetrams have done in temple community halls. So there's a lot of change and difference. And did you have a lot of folk dance in yours? I did. I did three. One was a gypsy dance, another was a plate dance, and another Marwari dance. These are all like, you know, Arangetrams were three hours shows. Now we've condensed it to nearly an hour and a half because even the pieces which we do have become shorter and tighter. The audience is losing patience to 
watch a dance for long as well. So things have changed. So how did you prepare for your engagement? The, te the lesson contact time with the teacher is one thing and you have self-preparation time. But the teachers those days gave us a lot more time and the students had to give time. So I would have a lesson, say for example, three hours, maybe three times a week. So 10 hour contact time and then my own time. That was the preparation for uh, a performance. And what age were you then? I was about 15, just finishing school. And did your family dance? Uh, not, nobody in my family is a dancer, but they're all musicians. My mother is a vocalist and she was a veena player and a vocalist, so art is there, but that's one of the reasons nobody wanted me to take up dance as a profession, because everybody's a medical person in our family. So we, everybody just becomes a doctor automatically. So now you completely devote your all your time and energy to Kanasan. Yes, because we've got this building, as you see, so it's a big thing to make this a center of excellence for South Asian arts. Uh, and I have m not more than seven days in a week to, t to give time. But I do still go as an examiner for medical undergraduates and I have postgraduates and others refereeing for support. But it's not a full-time job, and sometimes it's locum and advisory capacity, really. So how long has this been going, Kalasangam? Kalasangam started unofficially in 93. But we became a company and charity in 96. And since 96 till now. And what's the future of Kalasangam, do you think? Future is to establish, now we have a building. We have something to look forward to. And we've, uh, you know, we're in the process of establishing national and international partners, which means we bring in a lot of excellent artists and artwork into the building and make it a beacon center for culture, heritage, and arts. Is there anything else you want to add? Well, I think uh, your video is focused on oral history of dance and the Arangetram focus. Arangetram is something which is unique to South Asian dance styles, not even to Kathak, uh, because it, it's starting now called Ranga Pravesh in Kathak. It's unique, it doesn't happen in ballet or tap or modern or whatever. It's a heritage, Arang Yatram is, and the very word Arang is a stage. Atram is to ascend the stage. So it's to say that I've completed a course of repertoire in dancing and I'm ready to perform and teach. And really it was had a very spiritual meaning behind it. As well as that, it's got a sanctity, the word Arang Yatram, the, the event itself has spirituality and a thanksgiving event. But my concern, as I've always been saying, is that it's becoming commercialized a lot. And that's something we should not let that happen. We should keep that sanctity, spirituality, and the thanksgiving component prime in our minds when we do it. Um, and also, it should not be a competition, which I'm hearing and seeing a lot between uh, the way an Arangetram is done, you know, which uh, theatre do you book your Arangetram in? In Chennai, for example, where do you go? Is it Music Academy or somewhere else or what's happening? So if it goes back to its roots, it would add the value all the more. And one doesn't need to do an Arangetram to be an excellent dancer or a teacher. Sometimes that's another misconception we have that you have to finish your, it's nothing like that. Because dance doesn't end with that arangi, it's, it's actually the first step in your life. And you don't dance for a period, you're either a dancer for your life, because your soul has to dance, not just your physique. Because you dance with your eyes, 
and that's what Gauriyamma taught me. You dance with just with your face and that's what I teach my students that you don't do Abhinaya with the body but just with the face sometimes. And it's a prayer. I watched Nahid Siddiqui ji, who's a, I'm a great admirer and a friend of hers. When she does Kathak, her, she prays to her bells. She offers it as a op- prayer and an offering. And that's what artists who do Arangetram in Bharatanatya should aim to do. Otherwise, it is a dance completion which we should avoid. We should, when you have that spirituality and sanctity and thanksgiving feeling, you continue it throughout your life. But if you do it for the purpose of saying, I've completed this and I'm ready to do this and working on gaining a qualification, and this is like medicine, it's lifelong training. You can't stop with just a degree.